This video is brought to you by REP Gaming Products. Help protect your deck and support the show by picking up a steel deck box from the link down below. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Much Brew About Nothing. So you're thinking now, wait, 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 why are we playing the Vegas packs? Wasn't that deck tech from a couple weeks ago? And the answer is yes. So we had a little bit of a mix up. Basically, what happened is I recorded two weeks of instant deck techs, so I would be covered while I was away at GP Vegas, and I kind of forgot what order they went up, and I recorded Miraculous Mill for last week when it was actually supposed to go up today. So this week, we are backtracking and catching the week before to play Nivegas Packs, which is the deck we should have been playing last Sunday. So that's why we're playing Nivegas Packs today. And then we are back on track for next week. The good news about Nivegas Packs is this deck has potential to be one of the single fastest decks in all of Modern. We can kill on turn two. We can kill pretty regularly on turn three. The problem is we're very much a glass cannon deck, which means if our opponent has discard or removal or we just don't draw the right mixture of packs and creatures our deck looks really 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 bad so when everything comes together it is a thing of beauty and we can just crush people on the other hand consistency and removal slash discard can be an issue so it's going to be interesting to see how Nimegas packs actually plays out in practice how consistent is it the power is there I know the power is there when things come together but how often does it actually come together can it actually be competitive on a consistent basis? So that's what we're trying to figure out today. Anyway, like usual, gonna do a super quick two minute deck deck just a refresher, talk about some of the very brief changes. We added Pactive Negation to the main deck, which was one of the big suggestions from all of you with the instant deck deck. Blood Moons in the sideboard, because why not? A little more fetch lands for better mana base, but basically the same deck from the instant deck deck. If you wanna see a full breakdown though, follow the link in the description to the instant deck deck. Check out the full breakdown of Nivmega's packs. Anyway, a super quick reminder before we break down Nivmega packs for modern if you enjoy this deck and you enjoy much of brew in general it would be so cool of you if you could take a second click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen it's a great way to support the channel and the site for free so let's talk niv magus packs super quickly for modern so the idea of this deck is we're going to play a niv magus elemental or a kiln fiend these are our combo kill creatures we desperately need one of them either one of them grows as we cast spells so niv magus grows by eating our spells Kiln Fiend just naturally grows, but only until end of turn, whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell. So we need one of these creatures so desperately that we're even playing Flamekin Harbinger as a way to tutor them up. So our opening hand, almost like Boggles, really has to have one of these creatures. If we don't have one of them, we got them all again, because there's a risk that we will just never draw into them and our deck will look horrible. So hopefully we find one of those, and then we proceed to try to win the game as quickly as possible. So our big spell is Tainted Strike. Tainted Strike is essentially like a double strike spell but it doesn't care about lifelink because it gives our creature infect so if we can get either kiln fiend or nimegus elemental to 10 power, get through with one Tainted Strike kill, we kill our opponent from any life total. The spells that we use to pump our creatures are super janky. We are overloaded on packs. So the packs are free to cast, but then you gotta pay for them on your next upkeep or you lose the game. However, in our deck, we don't really care about that downside because we're either not gonna let them resolve, we're gonna cast them, maintain priority, eat them with our Nivmegas Elemental to grow it, or we're just going to pump our Kiln Fiend a bunch by casting them and kill our opponent before our next upkeep. So we are never really planning on paying for our packs. The only one we could really pay for uh, very often is Slaughter Pact. So we're mostly just casting these as free ways to pump our creature. Think of our deck as having like 20 copies of Mutagenic Growth, which is pretty much what they are. They're giving our Nimegus Elemental plus 2 plus 2, our Kiln Fiend plus 3 plus 0. So we're playing just a million Mutagenic Growths along with actual Mutagenic Growth. And these are the spells that we're trying to cast to pump our creatures to 
to get to the Tainted Strike to win the game. Otherwise, Ground Rift is a cool combo creature with Nibmagus Elemental. If we can cast two or three of our packs, then we cast Ground Rift, which has Storm for just one mana, and we're going to get a bunch of copies of it, and we can eat each of those copies with Nibmagus Elemental. So it essentially doubles up the number of spells that we cast in the turn as far as Nimagus Elemental is concerned. Plus, Ground Rift lets us get through a blocker. Otherwise, Apostle's Blessing is cheap and protects our creatures from basically anything, and it can force its way through blockers by getting protection from a color. Mana base, a bunch of extra lands, some shock lands, some basic lands. Sideboard, we get a bunch of cheap discard to try to clear those fatal pushes, path to exiles out of the way, fatal push to deal with blockers, blood moons to jank them out, and that is Nivmagus packs for modern, and that is our much a brew deck for this week. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon. All right. Much brew about nothing time. We are playing some, oh boy, Nivmagus packs in modern, and we're going to give this a go. We have Nivmagus, we have one packed, we have a ground riff. So, Blood Crypt, untapped, play Nivmagus Elemental. Oh, we have two packs. We're actually kind of close to winning. We're hoping for no fatal push, obviously, but... We can win in two-ish turns if our opponent doesn't have removal. Four. That is not removal. Forest Ancient. Oh, boy. Game on. Game on. Oh, we're going to... We are going to race Tron super hard. I think this is a turn three kill, even without any help. This is... This is the dream. This is... This is what our deck is trying to do. World Breaker. I think that might be a smidge slow. Opponent passes. And Apostle's Blessing. All right. Well, we are going to go for it. So, we... Maintain priority, we cast Pact of the Titan, we eat Pact of the Titan, we cast Slaughter Pact, targeting the Magus, we eat Slaughter Pact, we cast Ground Rift, Trigger Storm, oh man, we eat all the copies, and turn to... <laughs> Is this going to be an 11-12? Turn to attacking with an 11-12, hit our opponent, and say, Mr. and Mrs. Opponent, do you have an answer to an 11-12 on turn two? Urza's Tower. Ah, seems unlikely. Walking Ballista, X1. Well, Apostle's Blessing finishes finishes this off. Play Snow-Covered Swamp. Apostle's Blessing. Protection from Artifacts. And gotcha. <laughs> Good game, Tron. Good game. <laughs> uh, yep. Well, uh, that's what the deck's trying to do. We'll see how we'll see how consistently it does that. But that is exactly what our deck's trying to do. One hundred percent. All right. Against Tron, it's tempting to try to bring in the Blood Moons. I think we probably will bring in the Blood Moons. Go down. Hmm. They're not spells. Uh, we're also on the draw. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe we just want to try to kill as fast as possible. Well, let's go down Apostle's Blessing. Maybe we just go down all the Apostle's Blessings. I don't think Apostle's Blessing is actually that good. It did let us hit through Blood Moon or <laughs> through Walking Ballista, but all right. Um, I guess we keep this. We're hopefully going to draw into spells is what we need tower for our opponent we got the creatures oh boy Ugh, land number five was the last thing we wanted well play Nimagus elemental four lands is already really cutting it kind of on the high end five lands gonna be really hard to win so Nimagus go opponent oh dear natural tron time kills Nimagus. yep no spells to save it. I'll play Kiln Fiend past the turn. Hope our opponent cannot assemble Tron. Oh boy. Noxious Revival to get back the Spatial Contortion. Forest. Kills the Kiln Fiend. Chromatic Star. Opponent's down to two cards. We need to, our opponent not to do anything crazy. And we need to go Spell Spell. Ugh. We'll play the Mountain. Play Kiln Fiend. We're going to play Harbinger, but we're not going to tutor anything. Because we need to draw a spell here. 
we need to draw a ground rift. Our opponent having nothing and us having ground rift. Actually, that doesn't work with Kiln Fiend. Yeah, we really need to draw a spell last turn. Opponent cracks. Yep. Sphere. And cracks. Oh, boy. Come on, no power plant. It's a power plant. There's Tron. Assembled. Oh, boy. Opponent brought in a lot of removal spells. Okay. Opponent passes. The good news is... Ugh. The good news is if we had a reasonable hand, all of our opponent's removal spells are very fizzleable with Nemegus Elemental. If we can just eat one spell, Warping Whale and Spatial Contortion do nothing. So that's definitely going to be our plan for game number three. Oblivion Stone. Opponent passes. <laughs> uh, either looks like the best deck in, in modern or the worst deck in modern there's not much of a middle ground with our deck whoa urza's factory okay and we are going to scoop it up our opponent can just make two twos there's no way we drew way too many lands uh, i think we're gonna keep the blood moons Apostle's Blessing's not good enough. All right, run it back. Run it back, run it back. We got a plan. We got a plan. We just need our game one, our game one game to happen again. All right, we are on the play. All right, no creatures. We do have a Blood Moon, though. We're going to keep this. This might be 100% wrong, but the fact that we have, we have a kill in hand if we draw a creature, and we have Blood Moon for protection, and to slow our opponent down, seems reasonable our opponent's deck doesn't seem like the kind of deck i mean we really need to draw a creature but i don't know if our opponent will bring in ways to disrupt Mo blood moon against us it's possible they don't all right blood crypt tapped pass the turn opponent does have their basic forest power plant sylvan scrying four tower opponent passes creature all right polluted delta crack polluted delta grab a swamp Play a Blood Moon. Pass the turn. Creature. We need creatures. We need a creature. Tower. Probably better known as Mountain. Opponents passing. Creature. Blood Crypt. Pass the turn. Uh, we're flooding a smidge. Giving our opponent way too much time. All right. Huh. I'm slightly surprised that our opponent brought in Nature's Claim. Forest. Oblivion Stone. Chromatic Star. Yeah, I think that... That's probably game. With the Oblivion Stone sitting out, there's not much we can really do. Well, there's Flamekin Harbinger. This Oblivion Stone, though, is is deadly. I mean, take Kiln Fiend, play the Mountain, pass the turn. If we could get in one attack, we would win with Kiln Fiend. But with Oblivion Stone out, that's going to be unlikely. Noxious Revival, set up Tron. Gets back Sylvan Scrying, plays Sylvan Scrying, gets Tron. First cracks Chromatic Star. Yep. Assembles Tron, plays Tron. I'm pretty surprised that our opponent... I'm very surprised at what our opponent's uh, managed to do here. Get in with Flamekin Harbinger. Play Kiln Fiend. Pass the turn. Opponent blows Oblivion Stone. Tron land. World Breaker. Hits one of our lands. So I guess we gotta hope we just draw a creature and our opponent doesn't have any more action like we're still at a point where ugh, all right we're still at a point where one attack can win us the game but our opponent has so much mana now that it's becoming less and less likely that they have nothing karn and now we can well all right sure uh intervention pack we can't beat karn though unfortunately chromatic sphere that nature's claim i'm trying to figure out how our opponent managed to uh <sighs> All right, I mean, play Kiln Fiend. The problem is Karn just eats it. I'm trying to figure out how our opponent managed to bring in so many removal spells and bring in Nature's Claim and be playing stuff like Noxious Revival. All right, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it worked. I'm not really sure how our opponent managed to put that many cards in their deck, but, uh, yeah, they got it. All right, much brew about nothing time. Playing some Niv Magus packs in modern and all right i mean flamekin Ugh. no art promo noblest of high arcs well what did foothills crack what did foothills grab a blood crypt untapped flamekin harbinger 
We definitely gotta go Kiln Fiend. Actually, do we? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, Kiln Fiend one shots with this hand. So I mean, basically we play Kiln Fiend, we hope it lives. We hope our opponent doesn't block and we win. Gavany Township, Kitchen Finks. Ugh. Well, that makes it more likely that our opponent will block. Play Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Grab a Mountain, play Kiln Fiend. Pass the turn. So now we're hoping our that we draw an Apostle's Blessing, I think is our best draw. Yeah, pass the turn. Misty Rainforest for our opponent. Cracks it. Forest. Opponent goes attacking. Yep. Down to 12. Renegade Rallier gets back the land. Oh, come on, Apostle's Blessing. Opponent cracks. Temple Garden. Ugh, walking Ballista. Oh, play Polluted Delta. Go attacking. Now Apostle's Blessing wouldn't even do it. Yep, opponent block. And I believe this is just game, unfortunately. All right, good news is we're on the play for game number th two. And we can bring in fatal pushes as more ways to deal with a single blocker. Opponent gets in with a renegade rallier and kitchen things. Yep. Eh, I mean, we'll take it. Yeah, we're actually, we're actually just dead here. Ugh. Okay. All right. All right, all right. Fair enough, fair enough. So we get to bring in four fatal pushes. Go down maybe like one flamekin harbinger, one pact of negation. Ugh. Maybe go three fatal pushes. Man, this deck is hard to sideboard with. We need a lot of these cards to be able to win the game. Maybe we go down a land. That sounds crazy, but 18 lands is probably fine. We really only want two and maybe three. Let's play first. All right. I mean, this is not a crazy explosive hand, but we have Fatal Pushes. We have Nivmagus Elemental with Flamekin. We're just a little light on spells. But Blood Crypt, Flamekin Harbinger. Grab... Of Magus Elemental. Pass the turn. Vern Catacombs. Pona cracks it. Forest. And Noble Hierarch. Yep. Pona passes. Well, get in with Flamekin Arbiter. Hit our opponent. Down to 18. Uh, play Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. Grab a Swamp. Fatal Push Hierarch. Play Nib Magus. And pass the turn. Birds of Paradise. And one Swept Teeth. Pona cracks it. Ugh. Path. Thraben Inspector. Okay. <laughs> Pact of Negation. Well, go attacking. Hmm. Oh, play Mutagenic Growth. Pact of Negation. Eat Pact of Negation. Eat Mutagenic Growth. Hit our opponent for five. Play Flamekin Harbinger. But no tutoring. Oh, do we gotta kill this birds? Yeah, I guess. All right, that's our hand opponent. It's all out. All out in the open. So we managed to build a five, six. Rallier? Kitchen Fanks. All right, opponent gains a bit of life. We draw a mountain. Well, go attacking. Opponent blocks with Fanks. Yep. Back up to 15. Pass the turn. Opponent cracks the glue. Horizon Canopy. Devoted Druid. Oh, they're playing a unique version of the combo. Oh, dear. Well, get in with the Magus. Opponent blocks. Yep. Play Wooded Foothills. Pass the turn. Eh, I don't know. I don't know about this. Cracks Horizon Canopy. Looking for Vizier, I assume. Ugh, Gavany Township. Does this mean infinitely blocking Kitchen Finks, I think? One, two, three, four. Ugh. All right. Go attacking. Yep. Counters on everything. Opponent blocks. Sphinx comes back. Yeah, I'm unsure how we're ever going to get through this. We have Apostle's Blessing. But we're not particularly close to winning. Archangel of Thune. Okay. Well, crack Wooded Foothills. Get a Blood Crypt. Tapped. More lands. I mean, I guess we attack, but... Opponent blocks. Play Polluted Delta past the turn. 
Wins up to youth for our opponent. Cracks it. Gets a forest. Oh, boy. Court of Calling. All right. So this is the old school combo, but our opponent, Spike Feeder, just goes infinite with Archangel. I like to see one of the loops and then we scoop. So they remove a counter to gain a life. When they gain a life, it triggers Archangel of Thune, put counters back on everything. So our opponent gains infinite life and makes infinitely big creatures, attacks with Archangel, Archangel and we lose. All right. Ah, uh, that was a rough one. That was a bit of a rough one. All right, much brew about nothing time. Playing some Nivmagus packs in modern and Opponent, playing some humans, leads on an ether vial. All right. Well, Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Grab a Blood Crypt, untapped, play Flamekin Harbinger. Get a Nemagus Elemental, which is sweet, but we're a little short from winning, and our opponent's going to have a lot of blockers. And also Reflector Mage, pretty good against our plan. Opponent's passing. Well, go to combat. Get in with Flamekin Harbinger. Hit our opponent. Plane of Magus Elemental. If we draw a land, we can try to win next turn if our opponent doesn't have anything. Champion. Takes up Ether Vile. Ziggurat. If we draw a land, our odds of winning are fairly high. There's Sally as Lieutenant. Yup. Pump's Champion. Hmm. We can just kill Champion. How likely are we to win next turn? I don't think we're actually that likely to win. I guess if we draw a land, we win anyway if our opponent has nothing. So let's intervention pack, eat it. Grown of Magus, block champion, opponent ether files, phantasmal image, on Thalia's lieutenant. Well, now we have to pack to the Titan, eat it. Opponent grows the dorks. We kill champion, untap, land, no. Well, go attacking, opponent takes it, pass the turn. This is where reflector mage is devastating vials in reflector mage well we figured that was what was gonna happen and we figured correctly we were close <laughs> oh no phantasmal image what a hand that's uh, a lot of thalia's lieutenants and that is that is just game there's not a way we can come back from this i mean we can chump Opponent passes. We drew all the Kiln Fiends and never drew land number two, so we will scoop it up. All right, uh, on to sideboarding. Let's go down a couple Pact of... Let's go down the Pact of Nications for Fatal Pushes and try it like that. All right, we are on the play. No creatures, got them all. All right, I mean, we'll keep this. Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Get a Snow-Covered Mountain. Flamekin Harbinger. Get Niv Magus. Pass the turn. Razor Verge Ziggit, and the Noblest of Hierarchs. Well, get in with Flamekin Harbinger. Plane of Magus. Play Snow Covered Swamp. Pass the turn. Opponent. Man, they got all the real mana somehow. Sea Chrome Ghost. Meddling Mage. Name's Fatal Push. No attacks. Snow Covered Mountain. Oh, play Snow Covered Mountain. Go attacking. Opponent's down to 18. Pass the turn. Ziggurat for our opponent. Thalia. That is annoying. And Thalia's Lieutenant. Ah, humans. Gets in with Meddling Mage. Yep, down to 15. We draw more lands. Well, I guess we just gotta pass and start trying to block with Nymagus. This isn't where our deck really wants to be. Oh, no. Oh, God. These human draws. Opponents played five Thalia's Lieutenants out of... <laughs> Good running, good running. All right, and uh, we got the zero land nut draw. If we had one land, this would be a potentially a turn two kill, but we do not have one land, so instead we will mulligan. All right, land to the bottom. <laughs> All right, shambling vent for our opponents. Please, not a land. Please, please, please. Ground rift is not bad. So bloodstained mire, crack bloodstained mire. Pet the Exile is going to be a problem. Get Snow Covered Mountain, play Flamekin Harbinger. Tutor up, Niv Magus, pass the turn. So we can grow a big Niv Magus if our Niv Magus lives. Planes for our opponent. And passes. Well, get in with Flamekin. 
Hit our opponent. Play Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. Grab a Blood Crypt. Untapped. Plane of Magus. Pass the turn. All right, there's the path. Well, we get a land out of our deck. <laughs> Gotta look on the bright side. Opponent passes. All right, Slaughter Pact. Well, I guess that means we can kill things eventually. Tap land, go. Planes for our opponent. And there's a Gideon. Not sure how we ever beat a Gideon or any other card that's legal in modern. We'll drop. <laughs> we'll drop back to pass the turn. <laughs> oh boy, this deck. This deck. This deck. Gideon of the Trials, Emblems, Lingering Souls. Opponent passes. All right, Ground Rift, go. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Opponent thought seizes. And we can't win this game, so we're gonna we're gonna concede. There's not really a point in continuing on because our opponent will will know what's in our deck, and they didn't really know too much so far. So I think it's worth not letting them see that. I guess we can go like up a couple pact of negations, down a or er, up a couple thought seizes, down a couple pact of negations, and try it like that. All right, let's get a turn to kill. <laughs> Come on, deck. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. I swear. I swear you can do it. Please. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> This deck. <laughs> oh, it's brutal. It is brutal. Alright. We get to play first. Zero land nut draw. Uh, no creatures. Sure. <laughs> sure. We gotcha. We gotcha, opponent. <laughs> oh, boy. Opponent. Marsh Flats. Cracks it. Godless Shrine. And there goes our one creature. Okay. Yep. Well, at least you lose mercifully fast. That's that's the upside. That is the upside in Magus packs. Opponent, Godless Shrine, tapped, and Thoughtseize. Okay, takes Apostle's Blessing. Well, Crack Polluted Delta, Blood Crypt, tapped. Opponent passes. All right, Slaughter Pact, go. Well, Bloodstained Mire, draw Slaughter Pact, go. Field of Ruin, and there's a Gideon. Emblems Gideon. Well, crack Bloodstained Mire. Get a Blood Crypt. Tapped. All right, play a, play a Kiln Fiend. Pass the turn. Unfortunately, there's a Gideon and a Gideon Emblem. And probably a ton of removal since we're playing White Black Gideons. Takes up on Kiln Fiend. Lingering Souls. Planes. Opponent. Passes. The combination of cards in our hand could just win us a game with Kiln Fiend. Uh, it's not going to happen in this actual game, but that's how easy it is for this deck to actually win a game when things when things come together. Like, Slaughter Pact, Pact of the Titan, Tainted Strike. That is lethal with Kiln Fiend. Opponent gets in, down to 12. Lingering Souls is back. Planes. I guess another Slaughter Pact would give us a shot. All right, Apostle's Blessing. I mean, we have to go for it. If they have a removal spell, this doesn't work, but eh, all right. Uh, Apostle's Blessing, please no removal. On white, go to combat, attack, our, oh, this doesn't, this doesn't even work. Attack, because they have the Gideon Emblem. Attack our opponent. Well, we're going to show our opponent that if they didn't have a Gideon Emblem, we would have killed them. Yeah, there's just no way we ever beat this combination of things. So let's, let's send a message since we're losing anyway. <laughs> All right, opponent, we got you -ish. That's 14 in fact. Unfortunately, you have a Gideon Emblem, so we'll pass. And uh, actually, we just lose because we can't pay for our own pact. But we'll go out the honorable way to our own pact. Opponent takes up Gideon. Yep. Well, we did 14 in fact, so that's something. It isn't game winning because there's a Gideon Emblem, but down to seven. And yeah, cannot pay for the packs, and that's the death of us. Well, we 14'd our opponent with in fact. That's what our deck's trying to do, just preferably without a Gideon emblem out. All right, much brew about nothing time. Playing some Nivmagus packs. 
in modern. And this hand is very unfortunate. <laughs> we got all the creatures we could ever need, but we have no spells to make them good. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna keep it. I don't think we can ship this hand. Dark Steel Citadel for our opponent. Spells, please. Well, I guess that's kind of a spell. Plain and Magus Elemental. Pass the turn. I mean, I guess we can just go on like the super slow plan of playing multiple kiln fiends and trying to do it that way dark steel citadel i have literally no idea what's going on ground riff that is a ground riff well get in with Nemagus. play kiln fiend pass the turn ether hub what is our opponent doing ancient stirrings oh this is a, a hardened scales deck that's a Mind Stone. It's not a Hardened Scales deck. I have no idea what's happening. Opponent passes. Can we kill our opponent if we draw land? Maybe? It's a land. All right, so let's think about this. Is this lethal? We Apostle's Blessing, pump. Apostle's Blessing, pump. Ground Riff, pump. EDD. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> All right, I mean, I think that's the game. So, Apostle's Blessing, pay two life. Maintain priority, eat it with the Megas Elemental, grow our dorks, and then we Apostle's Blessing, pay two life, eat it with the Megas Elemental, grow our dorks, then we Ground Rift, pump our dorks, storm, eat it, oh, we got a target first, all right, eat it with the Megas, eat it with the Megas, eat it with Nemegus, and that is a uh, 21. <laughs> All right, uh, we got gotcha. you. <laughs> this deck's hilarious. <laughs> it, <laughs> oh man, I don't even know what our opponent's playing. I guess we're just gonna run it back. Uh, it is it is a hilarious deck. That looked like a really clunky hand. We had all creatures in one spell and we won on turn three pretty easily. I guess if we have ground rift and our opponent does not have a removal spell, it's kind of easy to piece together the win. I don't know what our opponent's doing, but geez, that was impressive. Well, uh, yeah. How fast of a kill is this? This is a fast kill. We would like a land, grow for the burn willows, ancient stirrings. If we draw a land, I think we win on turn two. Mindstone. Opponent passes. A Blood Crypt untapped. Plaintiff Magus. Pass the turn. So if we draw a land, we win next turn. Assuming our opponent doesn't have like a blocker or something. Dark Steel Citadel. All right. Come on, land. Come on, land. Land for the win. Terrarion. Oh, come on. Give us a land. Give us a land. Oh, it's eggs. Give us a land. Give us a land. A land for the win. Land? Mutagenic growth. So three, six, no. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we're just short. We need one more land. I mean, I guess we grow our Niv Magus. So eat slaughter pack. Mutagenic growth. Counter mutagenic growth. Eat pact and negation. Eat mutagenic growth. Yeah, I mean, ground rift. If we had one more land, we would have just given it in fact in one. So this gives our opponent basically one turn to combo off. If they have ironworks, then they beat us. Eat, 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 eat. Hit our opponent for 15. Ugh, all right, are we dead? Do you have ironworks? Wow, that was really close to two turn three kills. Scrap Trawler. Opponent. Passing. Oh, I think we have it then, because we have... <laughs> we have a second ground rift to make Scrap Trawler not block. All right, I think we're just racing uh, the best deck in modern. So play Bloodstained Mire, crack it. Grab a Swamp. Ground Rift, Scrap Trawler. And that's GG! Nemegas packs! <laughs> oh! It's a thing of beauty! It is a thing of beauty when it works. Uh yeah. Uh that was that was very close to two turn three kills. Uh we are a land away from 
two, turn three. No, was that a... Wait, is this game still up? That was... We... <laughs> It was even better than I was thinking. That was two turn three kills, and we are a land away from having turn three and turn two kill. Uh, all right, Nimega's packs. Uh, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So what do we learn this week about Nivmegas packs in Modern? And, oh my god, this deck. I think I tweeted about this as I was playing it, and my impression of Nivmegas packs is that it is the best deck in Modern approximately one out of every ten games. Our deck looked absolutely dreadful in a lot of our games, where our first creature would get killed, we'd spend the rest of the game drawing packs with no targets, why our opponent was killing us, or our our creature would get hit by thought seize, or we just mulligan, mulligan, mulligan why we were trying to find that first creature to do anything with, or we'd have to like flamekin harbinger for a creature and then something would go wrong. So there were a lot of really rough games. However, when it all comes together, it is super spectacular. We did get some turn three kills. We were super close to a turn two kill. We missed one land drop against the eggs deck from getting a turn two kill with the deck. So the power is there, but the power only happens on a pretty infrequent basis. And the biggest problem with the deck, I guess is kind of twofold. So number one, we do scoop hard to removal, and in modern, we have Path to Exile, we have Fatal Push, even Thought Seize if we're on the draw. Like, most of the time, we're keeping hands with one creature and counting on that creature to win us the game. We often have a hand that will win us the game in a turn or maybe two turns if that one creature lives, but it just doesn't happen as often as we'd like. And we kind of saw the good news against a deck like Eggs that doesn't have much interaction. Then we just kind of run them over because we're faster than a lot of combo decks in the format if they're not playing interaction. So that's the downside, is we really struggle with disruption. Yes, we can use Apostle's Blessing sometimes. Maybe we can use Pact of Negation if the timing is right. But that was definitely an issue. And that's mostly stemming from the fact that we don't have that many actual creatures that work with the plan of our deck. The other problem with the deck is we play a ton of cards that do quite literally nothing if we don't have a creature. So if we don't have Niv Magus Elemental or Kiln Fiend on the battlefield we just spend our turns drawing packs that do nothing pump spells that do nothing so we have absolutely zero ability to play a fair game of magic so kind of the way the deck works is we either win by turn three maybe turn four or we essentially lose by turn three or turn four we're not literally dead most of the time but we're in a position where we know we can't win our creature's been killed we have a handful of useless packs even if we draw a creature the odds of it working out are very very low so that's kind of the paradigm of niv Magus packs and in the end we won one match we won another game or two scattered through our leagues so the record obviously not ideal a one four and we played death shadow additional time and a couple other matches so the record just assume the record's not great so the reason to play Niv Magus packs is you do super cool things a small percentage of the time, similar to an against the odds deck, where some percentage of the time you get this absolute godlike hand where you just crush your opponent on turn two and everyone has these stares of amazement on their face and it's the coolest thing ever happened. Then the rest of the games, the good news is at least you're losing quickly. Like, you're not playing these long, grindy games. You're just like, okay, you kill my creature. I got a bunch of packs in hand. I'm not doing anything. Shake your opponent's hand. Move on to the next one. Spin the wheel again. Hope for that dream draw which, again, it happens pretty regularly. We did mulligan a lot. That is kind of frustrating. But we often had the pile of cards that would win us the game if our opponent didn't have a Path to Exile or a Thought Seize or a Fatal Push, those interactive spells that really ruined our day. So as far as fixing the deck, I don't know if there's any way that Niv Magus packs will actually be a consistent way of winning the game. One thing to consider with this deck, and after playing this deck, I think that maybe what you do with this deck is instead of playing this build of the deck, you play an ultra budget build of the deck. Uh, cut out the fetch lands. You could essentially be close to mono blue if you really wanted to. You could even cut Tainted Strike for like Assault Strobe as a double strike spell. Sure, it's not as good against Lifelink, but it still serves a very similar purpose as far as one-shotting people. So I feel like maybe the thing to do with this deck is to be like an ultra budget mono red or just barely splashing a color deck that cuts Cuts the more expensive cards, uh, cuts the Blood Moons, cuts the Thought Seizes for Duresses, 
cuts the pack to negations that are kind of expensive, the fetch lands, and just try to make this a deck that, sure, it's only going to win once out of every five games, maybe, let's say, like, not a high percentage. They're going to be amazing wins, but it's kind of hard to spend $500 on a deck that you know is going to win one out of every five games or one out of every five matches. But if you're spending $50 on a deck like that and the super good games are super good, then I think there's an argument for that so maybe that's the way forward i will post a deck list in the article follow the read more link down below i'll have the ultra budget version of this deck which is what i would recommend building i would not recommend spending 500 dollars on the megas packs but I would definitely recommend spending 50 bucks on the ultra budget version that plays similarly and still gets those super cool, super fast wins, but without having to spend $500 for a losing deck. So anyway, it's awesome when it works. It is very not awesome a lot of the time, but an interesting deck nonetheless. So I'm glad we tried it out. I'm glad we figured out that maybe ultra budget is a way to go with a similar style. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, help us out by clicking that like button down below. And to keep up on all the latest and greatest, click that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get alerts whenever we have new videos. And if you want to, check out some of our other sweet videos here and here.